Here's an overall vector called W. We've indicated an angle called theta. Here's our axes. Given this information, we need to break this vector into components. Please break this overall vector into components. Pause the video and give that a shot. Did you start by writing down the positive directions? Good, start with the positive directions. Now, uh, you might recognize that this is one of those no numbers problems. We were just given variables, no numbers. We're going to pretend we were given numbers for w and theta, even though we kind of weren't. Uh, so, uh, and again, remember, this is a quite common type of problem in most physics courses. So it's important to know how to deal with problems where you're not given numbers. Uh, incidentally, I might also mention that this is a common type of problem on standardized tests such as the MCAT. So that's another good reason to learn how to do no numbers problems. All right, so, uh, well, if we're going to break this into components, we've got to draw that right triangle to show the components. Uh, well, um, we're going to use this as the hypotenuse. The overall vector is the hypotenuse, and we need to draw legs that are parallel to the axes. Well, we should assume that this dashed line is parallel to the y-axis. Otherwise, we can't really do the problem at all. So we'll assume the dashed line is parallel to the y-axis. That means that one of the legs is along the dashed line. So I'm just going to draw that leg in. Right now, I don't quite know how long that's going to be. So I'll just draw it like this. And now I need to draw a leg over here that's parallel to the x-axis. So when I draw this leg, I should keep in mind that it's parallel to the x-axis and it should end up being perpendicular to the other leg. Otherwise, it's not a right triangle. So I'll do the best I can to draw that. All right, I tried to draw a leg that was parallel to this axis, and if I did a good job, it would have to come out perpendicular to the other leg. Now I can erase the rest of this. But this is a technique that I suggest you might use on your own when you're drawing the right triangle. You might just draw a great big line for one leg, because it's not clear at the beginning how far it goes, and then you try to draw on the other leg. We can label that this side is w sub x because it's parallel to the x-axis. And this side is w sub y because it's parallel to the y-axis. All right, now we need to put the arrows on the components. Well, the trick we've been using is to imagine that the overall vector is pointing away from this initial point and towards this final point. And we want components that point away from the initial point. Here, the x component is pointing away from the initial point and towards the final point. Here, this y component is pointing towards that final point. So I hope that that trick is helpful to you in figuring out the correct arrows to put on the components. Hypotenuse, adjacent. You know, before I did this, I surely should have put in an asterisk to show which air, uh, angle I'm focusing on. This is adjacent because it's adjacent to the angle that we're focusing on. Opposite. I also probably should have put an asterisk in to show that this is a variable we were given. And, you know, I should have put in question marks to show what the question is. It's a really good habit to get into, to use question marks for the question. Well, my question to you is to break this vector into components. That means find w sub x and w sub y. And here these asterisks indicate the givens. Cut. The adjacent side comes from using the cosine. The adjacent side has a length, which is represented by the magnitude of w sub y. We use a dot to indicate that this is the magnitude. Try to get into the habit of using this notation. Uh, I know that this is not a notation that your instructor is going to use, but I think that a beginning student will find it really useful to have a specific notation for when they're dealing with magnitudes. Uh, our hypotenuse here is w. Remember, we don't need a special symbol for the magnitude of the hypotenuse because there really is no signed um, overall vector. We don't ever really talk about a signed overall vector, so we don't need a special symbol for the magnitude of the overall vector. You could put a dot in on this w, though, if you wanted. It just doesn't make much difference. Well, that's as far as we can go with the magnitude of w sub y. Normally, at this point, we would now plug in for w and theta, but we don't really know what w and theta are. We're just pretending that we know. So the only step that's left is to find the sine component without the dot. Again, we know its magnitude is w times cosine theta. Now, 
Now we're dealing with W sub Y. It looks like W sub Y, we decided was pointing down and to the left. But the Y axis in the positive is pointing up and to the right. Positive is up and to the right, but the component is pointing down and to the left. So that turned out to be a negative component. And we can put that in our sketch now. W sub y is negative w cosine theta. If you didn't work out the correct sign, then you got the problem wrong. The sign is just as important as the magnitude. The sign is just as important as the magnitude. All right. Uh, now our hypotenuse is, uh, I'm sorry, the opposite side is the hypotenuse times the sign. So, use the sign to find the opposite side. Opposite side has a length represented by the magnitude of W sub x, represented with a dot. Hypotenuse is W times sine theta. We can't work out anything more about the magnitude of W sub x, so now it's time to figure out the signed component for W sub x. W times the sine theta is the magnitude. Let's see. The, x, the positive x direction is down and to the right. And our x component was pointing down and to the right. So that comes out positive. If you don't include the positive sign, then you're getting it wrong. You need to include positives on positive numbers just like you would include negatives on negative numbers. So W sub x is not W sine theta. It's positive W sine theta. It might be that your instructor might not include this positive sign, but a beginning student should definitely include a positive sign for a signed component that's positive. Don't go on until you've uh, satisfied yourself that you can get this problem right easily and confidently.